I've been fighting for this for so long and now that I finally know like I almost cried during the appointment I was so happy I was like finally I know <laughs> Hello, my name is Aneta Ostash, or Aneta Ostash, I go by both pronunciations. Um, I was born and raised in the US, but I'm 100% Polish, and I am here to discuss uh, ADHD, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. I was diagnosed with it just a few days ago, and it's something I've been fighting to get a diagnosis for for the past two years, and yeah, we'll go more into detail about that. Start. I just want to let you know that ADHD presents itself differently in everyone, especially between men and women. Women present different symptoms, and it's especially harder to diagnose in adult intelligent women, from what my doctor told me. Um, so I'm going to list off my personal symptoms. Um, if you can relate to any of these, then please consider maybe getting tested because I think there's a lot of people who have it and just don't know. So my first thing, I have a lot of sensory issues with food. I have been a picky eater my whole life. Um, I can't eat like butter or anything that has that consistency. It just makes me gag. And it was a lot worse when I was little. I would barely eat anything. Like I would eat only a few foods and that was it. Anything else I would spit out or I would just cry because I'm a very texture based eater. A lot of textures I just could not handle. So that, I think, is my biggest um, symptom that I have this disorder. Next, this is also a symptom of autism, but I stim, which basically means that sometimes I just maybe like move my hands or like stop my feet if I get really excited. Um, it's just like movements that sometimes you can control, but if maybe you're feeling really overwhelmed, you're just very emotional, sometimes just getting moving around just really helps you get those emotions out, especially if you're feeling overstimulated. That kind of helps you calm down. Um, so this isn't a symptom of ADHD, but also autism. So they go hand in hand. Um, the biggest symptom is probably the fact that I have a hard time sitting still. Um, it's very hard for me to sit in a chair and not really move unless if I'm very, very focused. Usually if I'm in class, I'm always adjusting myself. Um, if I'm on a bus, I prefer to stand, not sit. And that's a very common symptom to see in children with ADHD, just seeing the fact that they can't really sit still if they're always running around. So that is a pretty given sign and a pretty common symptom of ADHD, though of course there are others. This is also another common one, um, hyperfixations, which means you're, you're set on like one thing for a very long time. So for me, I can eat the same food every day for months and not get sick of it. I can listen to the same song every day for hours for like weeks on end and not get sick of it. This is very common for people with ADHD and I've been eating like the same food every day for the past couple of months. I listen to the same songs for like weeks until I discover a new one. Then that's the new song I listen to for weeks on end. <laughs> so those are called hyperfixations and it's pretty common with people with ADHD. Um, people with ADHD are also pretty emotional. I've always known that I was very, very emotional, but I did not realize that can also be a symptom of ADHD because sometimes I just truly can't control it. In fact, I was told that I had reactive depression, which means that if a, a not a traumatic event, but just some event happened to me, then I would react with depressive symptoms. But I've been told that I've had this since I was 13, which that's definitely not the case anymore. It's just a symptom of my ADHD. Next, um, I can daydream for hours at a time. I can sit still and just be in my head for hours. And I found out not that long ago that that's not normal. I was talking with my friend about it and he's like, yeah, not everyone does that. So I can quite literally just sit or walk around even for like hours just thinking about things and that, that, that's not a normal thing to do. <laughs> this, I think, also is part of another disorder, but basically, I sometimes have an auditory delay in the sense that I have to ask people to repeat things to me several times because if sometimes if someone says something to me 
it just sounds like gibberish. Like I cannot process what they just said. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. So I asked them to repeat and sometimes it still comes off as like gibberish. Like I don't understand what they're saying. So sometimes they might have to repeat a third time, maybe even more. And then I, it finally forms words. Like I can actually understand it. But sometimes in the beginning, it just sounds like complete gibberish, like nonsense. And it turns out that's also a symptom of ADHD. I struggle with a lack of focus. It's very hard for me to concentrate. That's also a very common symptom of ADHD. It started when I was about 13 and just continues to, it has gotten worse every single year since then. And especially now because I'm a master's student and I'm writing my thesis and I'm very behind because <laughs> I cannot concentrate on it at all. So lack of focus is definitely a huge symptom. This is probably one of the biggest ones that I struggle with and it's a given sign of ADHD. The last one that I have written down is basically overstimulation. And for me, I find that I'm overstimulated if I'm with a crowd of people and there are many different conversations happening at once and I kind of just shut down. I always thought that was an anxiety thing, but then I realized that there is just a lot going on and it's too much for my body to process and people experience this differently. Like that's how I experience it in a social situation. But sometimes people can be overstimulated by, uh, say, colors um, and so on. Um, but definitely, like, if you find yourself like shutting down, maybe being overwhelmed in a social situation, maybe there are too many colors or something, maybe it's too bright, that can be a symptom of ADHD and also autism. But yeah, that's personally what I struggle with with ADHD. I had all my notes written down. Did I did a test called Diva Five, and early on, my doctor said you definitely have ADHD. Like there is, you, you absolutely do. And then we got through the end of the test and she said, yeah, you have it. Um, and she's going to refer to me to a psychiatrist so I can start medication. And she also recommends I do therapy on top of that, just because she doesn't think I should solely rely on medication. And I also agree. I'm all for medication, but I think you should also do therapy, therapy with it together. And yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> How can people get to you? Maybe they want your advice. Yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, my Instagram is Aneta Ostash, which is A N E T A O S T A S Z, all one word. And if you do decide to go get tested, if you're a woman like me, please, if you can, try to see also a female doctor because I have been trying to get diagnosed for almost two years now and I have talked with two male doctors before and they told me that I didn't have it because that they thought that it was just symptoms of my depression, not the fact that I actually had ADHD. So if you're a woman like me, please go see a female doctor and regardless of who you are, just please try to get your diagnosis because you deserve it and you deserve to get help for it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>